Welcome to the Money is Emotional podcast with Christine Lukin, the financial dignity coach. In this podcast, we help you recover a positive and peaceful relationship with your personal finances. We do this by bringing together wise money management with emotional intelligence. Join us for this journey where we navigate our relationship with money as Christine Lucan draws from years of experience and guest experts to help you get to the root of your money issues. Hello and welcome to Money is Emotional with your host, Christine Lucan. Christine, what's going on? Well, my husband finally bought his midlife crisis car. (laughs) <laughs> After three years of procrastination. <laughs> Midlife crisis car. Uh, tell me again, what car is that? Well, for the longest time, he said he wanted a Porsche. Mm-hmm. And then he started looking at different cars and going back and forth. And evidently for mechanical reasons that I don't understand, he doesn't like the new Porsches. He likes the older Porsches. And the prices just were never coming down. And so he started looking at other cars and he finally decided that he didn't want to pay that much money for an older car that would probably have high repair bills. Mm -hmm. So there's a brand new Lexus 350 RC. Oh my. The garage right now. Okay. Well, (laughs) mission accomplished. Only took a few years. Yeah. In his favorite color. Gray. Well, Gray. It's actually <laughs> what? that is not the color I was thinking. <laughs> it's a t- it's called atomic silver, which is basically okay. a sparkly gray. Okay, that's I can do. <laughs> sparkly gray is fine. I just thought like gray is a little drab, but sparkly gray, all the difference. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's funny because my husband, like he he is not a color person, which is funny because we are talking about color today. Yes. If you look in his closet, most of his shirts are gray, navy blue, black, or white. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't want to make, uh, you know, I, I wanted to be friends with your guests, so I didn't mention before uh, this, so I'll just put it on the spot. I'm I'm partially colorblind, so uh, I don't um, know if I'm going to be able to participate a whole lot today. <laughs> well, we didn't come here to talk about cars today. We did come here to actually talk about color, which is... Probably people are thinking, why are we talking about Hmm. color on the Money is Emotional podcast? Well, stay tuned because we have our special guest and my friend, Michelle Lewis. Michelle is a color psychology and branding expert. She is the author of Color Secrets, Learning the One Universal Language We Were Never Taught. And she's the host of the Visible Entrepreneur podcast. Welcome, Michelle. Hey, Christine. So excited to be here. Yes, me too. So I would love for you to briefly tell us about your journey with color. How did you become so fascinated with it and decide to make the focus of your career and your business? It's wild, isn't it? It's unusual. It's strange. (laughs) It's something that just happened to me. Uh, It all started in film school, actually. Someone got me a book while I was in college because I was studying film and television production, since that's the world that I was raised in. And it was called, If It's Purple, Someone's Gonna Die. And it was such a great title, right? And what it did is it showed me how certain colors were used in certain films to bring an audience emotionally and mentally through the story. And I thought, isn't that interesting? And I didn't really think much of it, you know, graduated, started working in film, and then decided to start my own business after having gotten a degree in interior design and natural medicine and all this stuff. And so I was like, okay, yeah, I'm going to launch my business. It's going to be great. And it was an utter and total failure. (laughs) Zero sales, zero growth, zero anything. I'm sure people that are listening can relate. And (laughs) I thought it was something I had done wrong. Must be me must be my offer. Like, this is just not meant for me. And I saw that book in my bookshelf. And I thought, now this is crazy. What if I used that formula for movies in my business? So I decided on making my primary color blue. And I changed, you know, I was lucky that I married a photographer. So we (laughs) retook some photos and put it online and all that stuff. And I went into this event in Los Angeles by Joanna Turner. 
And I remember walking up to her to introduce myself. And of course, like no more nerves introducing myself to actors anymore, but like a well-known entrepreneur. And I'm like, <laughs> you know, so nervous about it. And I went up, hi, Joanna, I'm Michelle. She said, oh, you're Michelle Lewis, Visibility Vixen. I remember you from the blue dress. I thought, what? <laughs> and that's how everything started. And of course, it's more from there, but that's what really woke me up to the fact that, oh my gosh, like color gives us that brand association. And that's where everything started. Yes. Well, as you might have guessed, we are all about money and emotions here on the Money is Emotional Mm -hmm. podcast. So tell us, how does color affect our emotions and our physical body? Because when I read this in your book, I had never heard this before. It's something that's relatively unknown in modern society. And yet it's something that has been proven for even thousands of years with Avicenna in history and how he would say like, okay, if you're having a bleed, like a nose, don't look at a red wall because it'll increase the circulation. So this is something that's been around forever. And as I started figuring out that I wanted to get deeper and deeper into color psychology, I knew that just with my kind of litigious mind, I had to be able to prove it. And I had to be able to prove it scientifically because it's one thing to say like, oh, it affects you, mind, body, and spirit. That's nice. That's an opinion. I wanted the facts. And so that's when I really started digging into what studies have been done. And that's what proved over and over again with so many different colors that I'm sure we'll go into that you could prove a physical reaction 100%. You could also prove an emotional and mental reaction. And that was scientific. And that's what really made me understand, especially looking at the Thomas Young uh, double slit experiment, where light behaved as both a particle and a wave, depending on whether or not a person was watching it. That made me go, oh my gosh, like light, which is color, is actively participating, responding to us every single day. So that's what really blew my mind. Uh, yeah, that blows my mind too. (laughs) That totally blows my mind too. You know, our history together, you know, you and I were in a business mastermind together and Mm -hmm. actually, interestingly enough, you, you have a, uh, a product called the podcast pitch kit, which we'll have to link up here in, in the show notes that I purchased from you. And I mean, I have guessed it on so many podcasts because of the information that I learned from you. And so, but this like color really coming forward in your business happened after, you know, we graduated out of the mastermind. And so I've like loved watching your evolution into this and this really being the the centerpiece of your business. And I was really intrigued when you put out this quiz. So I had this major epiphany after taking your brand color quiz. And I want to say it's maybe, has it been two years? It feels like it's yeah, been like I think two so. years since then. It's been a while. But I realized that one of my main brand colors was actually causing an emotional reaction in my customers that I don't want them to have. <laughs> and so as I was going to, you know, change my title, some people may or may not know this. I used to call myself the financial lifeguard. And since getting the trademark for financial dignity, I've shifted that to financial dignity coach. But I found this out shortly before I did my rebranding and I thought, oh my God, I need to change my colors. And the color that I got as my result, I believe was gold. Yep. The gold or yellow. And and at first mm-hmm. I was like, ew, no, I don't want that color. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I love my red. I don't want to change my colors. But let's talk about that and why it was a good business move for me. Because I know it was. The, the money proves it. But I'd love for you to walk people through like, why would someone who is helping someone with their finances to become positive and peaceful about that area in your life. Why is it a bad idea to use red? And why was pairing the two blue shades that I use, I have like a teal and a navy blue with gold instead of red. Why was that a better move? Absolutely. I remember that call and I remember you saying, Mm -hmm. well, I tested for this, but I don't like it. (laughs) And I was like, well, we're having this call to have a pivot. And it sounds like you don't want to pivot. You're like, no, I don't. 
And we're like, okay, let's just talk about it. And (laughs) this is what happens so often, right? We get so attached to the colors we choose in our brand. And it's mostly because we see it as a reflection of ourself and our likes. Even though, of course, you want to have elements of you in your brand. That's important, I do believe. If we want to attract ideal clients, we really have to base our branding on what will attract them. So specifically Mm -hmm. in this case, you know, your audience is predominantly female and are usually coming from a stressful financial background, whether they have a lot of money or are mismanaging their money or are needing more money. Mm -hmm. And because of that, I knew immediately that red is going to be a bit too triggering for that audience. The first part of that being that males respond more positively to red in terms of accelerating action, whereas females perceive it as much more of a danger and warning sign. So I knew that that was potentially going to be a disconnect there. And when you tested for gold, of course, this made sense since you're talking about financial dignity, lasting wealth, building a system that works for you with your money. Mm -hmm. So that's what really resonated with me in terms of your audience. And in terms of the blue, a lot of that had to do with the trust, seeing you as the authority in this matter, which you are. And then the teal, of course, is to represent that freedom of getting on the other side of these struggles. So when you made that pivot, I knew without a shadow of a doubt that it would be a wonderful change for you. And I'm so happy to hear that it was. Yes, it was. And I love it. And I now I'm like, I can't believe I resisted this. Like, gold is amazing. I love it. <laughs> so normal, though. Everyone goes through it. That's for sure. Yes. Well, and my favorite color is blue. So I still get to, I still got to keep my absolute favorite color in there. And I know, aren't you one of the lucky ones? I know, I know. But that's an interesting point that you bring up is that if someone wants to make more money in their business, that they really need to look at the colors that are going to positively affect their audience, not necessarily the colors that they like. Yes. And that can be a really hard mental pivot. But when you realize that if you're branding just based on yourself, your emotions and feelings, you're essentially only able to market to yourself. And (laughs) what we want to do is have you market, you know, one to many instead of one to one. And so that's why we really want to take into account an audience's emotions. Now, when it comes to the shade, tone, hue of a color, that's where your personality gets to come into play a little bit more. But the actual color choices themselves... I believe should be entirely based on your audience. Excuse me. Yes, you. Thank you so much for listening to the Money is Emotional podcast. We hope you're enjoying it so far. If you have any questions or would like to talk more about this topic, you can find us at www.christinelukin.com and all of our social media platforms are listed in the show notes. That's a very good point. Um, that you can play with the shade and the tone, et cetera, because, I mean, there's probably at least 500 different shades of blue that mm-hmm. that someone could pick. But you actually help people pick the right shades, which is awesome. Absolutely. So let's shift here a little bit, because I know not every single person that's listening is an entrepreneur, although we do have a lot of them in the audience. Many of us think about the color of money especially here in the U.S., we think about green. Should Mm -hmm. we surround ourselves with green if we want to be more prosperous? Ooh, what a good question. You know, as you said, wealth looks different, not only based on the state that you're in and the currency, but also the culture. So for a lot of people, even though they might be living in the United States, wealth to them, especially if they're more attached to wealth in a familial environment, a religious environment, things could look very different. So I think overall, if wealth to you right now is predominantly financial, it definitely doesn't hurt to surround yourself with shades of green. You know, green is the most relaxed that our eye ever experiences color. Rods and cones are calm and at a homeostasis, and it can definitely represent growth. Absolutely. But I do think that it isn't necessarily one magic color that will help you feel more prosperous. I think it's figuring out where those struggles are that you're having emotionally. For example, is your life in chaos right now? 
Well, you might need a lot more orange to support that desire for balance. Are you becoming more and more cerebral because of your job? Well, then you may want to wake up the body a little bit more when you get home. So it's really more so about balance that I've found of figuring out how to find that homeostasis with color versus just focusing on one, hoping for an end result. Yeah. Well, and I remember in one of your trainings, you talked about like, not all shades of green have positive connotations. True. Every color has a good side and a bad side. And there's no universal meaning to that just because, you know, some people watched Wizard of Oz when they were three and they're scarred for life by the Wicked Witch. (laughs) Other people, you know, they had a traumatic experience in their youth. And so they're really triggered by red because it was something violent. It can be different for every person. And that's what's so interesting about color. I do feel like a lot of people, especially ones that create those color wheels, they try to pigeonhole um, meanings to color. But as we've talked about, it varies so much person to person, country to country, culture to culture. Yeah. Well, and what I find is really interesting and what I've what I've learned in your book and through doing a one on one consultation with you, we can use colors for different purposes. (laughs) So I actually have a shirt that I call my closing shirt. So yes, I I wear it on all of my coffee chats with clients because the closing ratio for people who actually qualify and who are a good fit, when mm-hmm. I wear that shirt, it is like 70%. Woohoo! <laughs> I remember us talking about this and looking through your clothes. This makes me uh-huh. so happy. I love it. Yes. Well, and then there's other colors where if at the beginning of a coaching relationship, if I don't already know the person, you know, because sometimes I do have people who I used to go to church with, or I used to work with a long time ago, who will hire me for coaching. But many times it's, you know, a referral from a financial planner, and the person doesn't know me very well. You know, early on in the coaching relationship, I have a purple shirt that I will wear. Yes. Yay. So we tell people what purple means, because I know they're going to They're going to be emailing me if we don't tell them. (laughs) Yes. Purple in so many cases is the relational color. This is the connection color. And uh, Christina and I talked about this because, (laughs) yes, of course, you can wear a signature blue. And I'm sure that that might be one of her closing colors. But when you're connecting with someone for the first time, you want to have that relational trust that's built and purple in so many cases symbolizes that. So especially if I'm meeting someone new for the first time virtually or at the local coffee shop, this is the color I wear. It helps put people at ease and helps them connect on a deeper level in so many cases. And I'm thrilled to hear that that's working for you too. (laughs) Yes. Well, and On the rare occasion when I have a client who seems to be dragging their feet on something, for example, you know, maybe two sessions in a row, I'll check with them and there's like a particular homework item that they haven't done. I'll come to the next session wearing red because I want them to take action. And I don't wear it much anymore on client meetings, but every once in a while I'm like, oh, it's time to pull the red shirt out. I got to get this person to pull the red shirt out. (laughs) But it's almost like, I feel like this is my secret weapon and I almost don't want to tell people about it. I know. I totally understand. I, I felt that way at moments too, because it was like, oh my gosh, like, am I going to share these secrets? And then I realized this is the beauty because that's the thing. Color changes. It changes over time. It's proven to do so. And so I think that's what's so cool about sharing this because for you, red does that to your clients. For someone else, it might be yellow. It might be magenta. They're also both stimulating colors. So this is the beauty when you bring in color psychology is that you become the diagnostician in your life and in your business, because color then becomes a tool and a resource for you. And that's the beautiful thing. Yes. Yes. And so at the same time, it's like, I feel like everybody needs to know about this. (laughs) Mm -hmm. I agree. (laughs) All right. So let's do a little bit of a lightning round. I'm going to give you some common financial scenarios, and I'd love for you to tell us which colors would be beneficial to bring in and why. And also, what color should we avoid in this situation? 
So okay, the I'm first one base this. I'm so sorry to interrupt you, but I'm going to base this based on where we live and what okay. we have in our culture. Okay, perfect. All right. If we are tempted to spend emotionally, mm, I bring in some blue to help bring our mind back into it. Mm, that's perfect. What color should we avoid when you're spending emotionally? What color should you avoid? Yes. I would say probably pink because that is going to bring in a lot of like comfort and self-soothing. So that may actually prompt you to overspend or buy luxury items when you then realize when you look at your bank account that that was a terrible mistake. (laughs) So did you hear that people who are who are selling luxury items? You should wear pink. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. Uh, But not not magenta pink, though, right? Not the Barbie pink, because that's a little different, isn't it? Barbie pink is actually hot pink, not magenta. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So does that cause you to spend too? Well, that's hard to say. I mean, it's definitely an action driving color, but I would say no. It's going to make you make bolder choices, but that will probably be more so in your personal life or in your business and not necessarily in your spending. Okay. All right. So what if someone is stressed and anxious about money? Definitely avoid yellow. We don't want to overstimulate the nervous system. I would say bring in those greens and blues, even a teal. So calming, brings down the heart rate. It's the equalizer, right? So if you're too stressed, it's going to bring you down. If you're too depressed, it's going to bring you up. So especially those greens and those blue-based greens, I think that's the sweet spot. All right. So what if we can't get motivated to take action with our finances? Ooh, like you talked about red, that's a great one. If you don't have positive associations with red, then I'd try magenta. Okay. So what about if we need to talk to our partner about a potentially upsetting money situation? Or maybe money is just a general source of conflict in the relationship. Mm -hmm. Are there certain colors that we should be bringing in that are going to help create that harmony? Yes. I mean, of course, in terms of your interior design, you can do that. But in terms of in the heat of the moment, I'd definitely be putting on a purple shirt before talking to my spouse. (laughs) And uh, if that wasn't a possibility, I might even try orange just to remind him, you know, we're family, we're in this together. Like this is our safe space. Like it's going to be okay. I love that. Yeah. So I really feel like this color is the secret weapon for I think so. You know, for our finances to to help ourselves like support the goals that we have with the various things in our personal finances. So do you have any parting words of wisdom for our listeners who want to use color to enhance their interactions with money? Or sure. yeah, you know, it all starts in the closet. This applies to people who have their own businesses or not. Every day we all do one thing. Hopefully we put on a shirt. And so it's nice to know that you can actually strategically choose what you buy based on the primary communication colors, which are all the colors of the rainbow plus pink and magenta. And then every day you can figure out what do I need? What intention am I going to support? What does, you know, my family need or, you know, I'm going to make a tough choice today. What will support me in this? We all of a sudden have this ally in our closet that used to just be black, white, gray and navy. And Mm -hmm. I think that that's the beautiful thing is that this becomes an arsenal. This becomes a tool. This becomes a supportive medium. And that's what I'm incredibly passionate about. Because as you said, it becomes something you consciously become aware of every single day. Yeah, I feel like my closet has exploded into a rainbow of colors since I have been following you. (laughs) Yay, that's the best compliment you could ever give me. (laughs) So you know what, before we close, though, I want to talk about white, black, and gray, because I know there's Mm -hmm. some people out there. I got a lot of friends in New York City. Who are going to say they're mad right now? (laughs) They're very mad. They're like, you didn't even talk about black, like the color of sophistication. Tell us why these colors actually, I mean, they're basically not colors, right? 
Yeah. I mean, essentially I, you know, we have the communicative colors, which are the ones I shared with you. Then we have the non-communicative colors, which is the blacks, whites, grays, browns. Now I'm not saying that because I mean, in some cases people feel more secure with brown. You go into an all wood home, it feels good, but Mm -hmm. they do not create a physical response that's measurable in the body and in the cells. So that's the distinction. And of course, most people, they get very upset when I talk about black. I've enraged the gothic community on TikTok. Like, I get it. We we all love to have some level of black. And you can absolutely find a tone or a shade or a tint that looks best on your skin. That's absolutely true. But when it comes to communication, those are not colors that communicate. So that's the difference. And I think that especially in a color deprived society, since you can actually prove that certain colors link to certain organs of the body, when we just stick to blacks and whites and grays, those parts of the body do not get woken up. They don't get energized. They don't get stimulated. So this is where it can be really powerful. And especially if you are living in a place like New York or Minnesota or Wisconsin, where you have gray in the sky so many months out of the year, why not use color as a tool to keep those organs awake and to stimulate thinking and feeling and all those things while you have that gray sky going on? Those are the questions I like to ask. Yeah. So now this explains why my husband's favorite color is gray because he doesn't want to be communicative he mm-hmm. is a diehard introvert <laughs> yep he, he gray, doesn't want to be noticed <laughs> gray mutes personalities over time it doesn't mean we can't yeah. wear it right i love gray but yeah. it's not the only thing we should be wearing and what's amazing is that we usually have a very strong resistance, I'm sure your husband does as well, to really strong colors. And yet, as we start putting them more in our environment or on our skin, different qualities of our personality and communication start to change. Mm. You know what? I noticed that about orange because I used to not love orange. Mm-hmm. And I wore a dress to a Christmas party. Uh, for my dad's company. And it was, um, it was like a reddish orange, you know, it wasn't a true red. It was like a reddish orange. Mm -hmm. And this woman stops me at the buffet line and she's like, I swear I know you. And I'm like, well, I'm like, I might've seen you at last year's Christmas party is basically what I told her. (laughs) And she just looked me straight in the eyes and she goes, you just feel like home. And I was like, kidding. And this was like maybe two months after I had read your book. And I'm like, oh, my God, that's exactly what it says about orange. (laughs) You're like, this is some kind of sorcery. I don't understand. (laughs) It is. It's like this superpower. It gives you the superpower when you're interacting with other people. It's Mm -hmm. it's crazy and amazing. And so all of you entrepreneurs out there, if you're not interested in color, you absolutely should be. So we're going to link up. We have so many resources from you, Michelle. And we want to thank you so much for being here. I learned so much about color from you every time that we talk. And I'm sure our listeners are going to want to connect with you so they can continue their exploration of color as well. So we're going to have uh, your links in here because you've got your book. Um, You do color analysis for people. So if they want to know what tones and what shades they should be wearing, you're even starting to offer a color psychology certification for marketers. So if we've got some branding people who are listening to this, I mean, this could be a huge differentiator for you. Absolutely. Thank you so much. I'm looking forward to hearing from your people and seeing what they think. Yeah, me too. Awesome. Thanks so much for being here. Thank you. It was a blast. All right. There's so much to ask. Well, we don't have time, Uh, but I do have one question. Uh, Well, first, one comment, then one question, because when you brought up, I think it was the book, did you say, uh, what was it about purple and somebody's going to (laughs) die? Yes, that was a book. uh, I can't I can't remember the author's name off the top of my head, but it was called If It's Purple, Someone's Going to Die. And it was all about film and colors in film. That's hilarious, because as a Star Trek fan, the old school Star Trek, anybody who watches that knows that if anybody goes on an away mission in red, they're dead. Yes. <laughs> that, that was just the deal. That was that was Yeoman Smith. Come on, you're on the away mission. He's like, oh, crap, he's going to die. He, and he knows it. He's got a red shirt on. 
anyway, so that, that was the first thing that flashed in my head when you said that. Um, I do have a quick question and maybe we can't cover it in just, you know, this next two minutes, but what about patterns? When it comes to colors and patterns, is that something that you dove into? I'm, I've never met you before, so I don't know much about you. I'm really looking forward to getting to know you more and what you do. But is there something to do with patterns, whether it's polka dots or, or checkers or, or whatever with colors? How does that work? You know, the color combinations, of course, you know, if you have a yellow and a blue, that's going to be stimulating the nervous system as well as the mind. In terms of patterns from my studies, there's not really a lot of behavioral changes. Like I can tell you, you don't wear checkered shirts on a film set because it causes the camera to stroke, yep. those kinds of things. But uh, where I found actually there's the most attachment in terms of patterns is actually symbolism in different cultures. So it's a mm. bit of a different topic. Interesting. Okay. Well, a different topic for maybe a different day. So yeah. again, thank you so much, Christine. Folks listening to this, if they want to reach out to you, I know that you're going to have links for Michelle, uh, but if they want to reach out to you and speak to you about the coaching that you do or some of the programs that you offer, how do they get a hold of you? Yeah, they can hop over to my website, which is christinelukin.com. All right. And that makes it easy. Again, thank you both so much. Great information today. Great podcast. And our last thank you always goes to you listening audience. Thank you so much for tuning in and listening to the Money is Emotional podcast with Christine Lukin. If you have not subscribed to the podcast yet, please click the subscribe now button below. This way, when Christine comes out with a new podcast, it'll show up directly on your listening device. And we humbly ask that you share this podcast, rate it and leave a review as this actually does help others find the show. Again, thank you so much for listening today. For everyone at Money is Emotional, this is Eric Johnson reminding you to live your best day every day. And we'll see you next time. Thank you for listening to the Money is Emotional podcast. To get in touch, visit our website at www.christinelucan.com or drop us a line at hello at christinelucan.com. And don't forget to click the follow button to be notified when new episodes become available. The information covered and posted represents the views and opinions of the guest and does not necessarily represent the views or opinions of Christine Lucas. The content has been made available for informational and educational purposes only. The content is not intended to be a substitute for professional investing or tax advice. Always seek the advice of your advisor, tax professional, or other qualified financial professional with any questions you may have regarding your personal finances.